and girls it's good to have you again all too soon we've come to the end of another month but isn't that great we are still alive we are healthy we are strong God continues to keep us and sustain us I am so thankful and I'm sure you are too let's hear a word of prayer Father, we are so thankful that you continue to keep us. You continue to provide for us. You continue to protect us. And you continue to teach us your word. Your word that is a lamp unto our, our feet and a light unto our path. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Great. For the past weeks, we've been looking at God's creation. I know that when you started February, you looked at animals and man, how God created that. It was an exciting lesson for me, and I'm sure it was for you too. And then we looked at Adam and Eve, how God created us in his own image and likeness created Eve, the woman, to be a helpmate. And last week, oh, that was so, so exciting. Dinosaurs and dragons? Huh, I'm sure you've learned a lot about that. Great. And so this Sunday, we're going to do a review of all that we have learned. But we, before we get into our review session, Let's look at our memory verse again. By now, I'm sure you know it offhand. And so you can close your eyes and say it. Okay, let's go ahead. So we'll close our eyes and say it. Psalm 8, verses 5 and 6. Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works 
of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. Psalm 8 verses 5 and 6. Great. Did you get it? I know you are smart children. And remember, we just don't say it. The word of God has to be in our heart, right? So we need to learn it, meditate on it, keep it in our heart, and do what it says. But this one, it helps us to worship God, to just praise him, to just honor him because he is a mighty God and he is all powerful. Okay, now we're going to play a, a game on your screen. Just look at it. So words are going to be taken off and then you will fill in. So get your pens and pencils, get your paper and write down your memory verse. So you write it down and then you fill in the missing word. Okay, I'll give you probably maybe 15 seconds will do because I know you know it offhand and so you will do it so quickly. Whilst you're doing that, I'll be listening to my memory verse song and dancing. Okay. Okay, I think our time is almost up. You've got it, right? Okay, so now let's, let's go over one last time. Girls, are you in the house? Young girls, are you in the house? I want you all to say it. Let's see, just the girls. Okay, let's go. Psalm 8, verses 5 and 6. Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. Great, girls. That's Psalm 8, verse 5, verses 5 and 6. Okay, let me hear the gentle man. Young boys in the house. Hmm. Let me see if I can get my bass voice. I normally try that. Maybe it won't be too bass. Okay, boys, let's go. Psalm 8, verses 5 and 6. Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. Psalm 8 verses 5 and 6. Great boys, that's wonderful. Now we'll revise with our memory verse song, okay? So go, let's listen to it. And then you pay attention for your review lesson. See you and take care. Bye. You have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings, yet you have made him a little lower. Heavenly beings crowned him with glory and honor and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You.
Hello, hello, lovely ones. Great. By God's grace and mercies, another Sunday is here with us again. God has created a new day, you know, because the Bible tells us that he commands the sun to come for every morning and commands the stars also in the evenings. So God has commanded the sun to come today and it is God's new day for us. Great. Over the past few weeks, what have you been learning about at Sunday school? Great. We've been learning about the creation and the truth is known to all of you now. God did create everything. But the special one is when he created human beings, what did he do? Yes, he breathed into them. So we are special. We have God's spirit with us. And we learned also about the dinosaurs and all that. Great. So God created everything in this universe. Nothing in this universe is there that God did not create. Mm -mm. Also remember, we learned that God created Adam and Eve, male and female, so that there'll be marriage. Good. I will not bore you with a lot of talk. We'll say a prayer. And after that, we are just going to watch a video throughout for today of all that we have learned for the past three weeks. Right? So shall we close our eyes and pray? Our gracious God and our heavenly Father, want to thank you very much for creating this new day as well for us. I want to thank you for the gifts of our lives. Father, even as you watch the video, that is going to be a review, a summary of all that we have learned for the three weeks. Father, help us to understand you more, that you are the creator of everything, so that we will share this message with our friends and all those that are confused. Thank you, Father, for today, and thank you that we're going to have a good time with our videos. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. All right. Time for the videos. Sit back, relax, and learn the lessons from God. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light. And there was light, and God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, 
the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that has life and birds that may fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of heaven. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth a living creature after its kind, livestock and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after its kind. And it was so. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Well, dinosaurs went on the ark, they came off the ark after the flood, all lined up to have their photographs taken. <laughs> and like typical American entrepreneurs, they sold t-shirts, I survived the flood. <laughs> but then you know what happened? They started to spread out over the earth. Now you might say, Mr. Ham, is there anything in the Bible that indicates that people actually saw dinosaurs after the flood? Because if dinosaurs come off the ark, they must have existed after the flood too. I know you talked about dragons in the Bible, but is there any specific reference to a dinosaur? Well, I think there is. In the book of Job, Job chapter 40, verse 15. Let's say it. Job chapter 40, verse 15. A loud voice. Job chapter 40, verse 15. God said to a man called Job, he lived after Noah's flood, Job, look at this big animal I made, behemoth, everything about him is big. As you read the description in Job 40, you find that his muscles are big, his belly is big, you find his legs are big, you find they're strong, everything about behemoth is big. In fact, he's described as the chief or the first among the works of God, which means the largest land animal God made, and he has an enormous tail like a cedar. It's an enormous animal, enormous tail, enormous legs, enormous body. It's the largest land animal God made. And you know what many Bible commentaries and Bible notes say? They say it was probably a hippopotamus or an elephant. Does that make sense? No. I mean, I spent all day at the zoo once getting the photograph of a rear end of an elephant. People said, what are you doing? And I said, behold, behemoth, he has a tail like a cedar. Does that look like a tail like a cedar? No, it looks like a little bit of reed hanging in the wind going flip-flop, flip-flop, doesn't it? <laughs> hey, how about this, a hippopotamus, do you think that fits? No, it looks like a little flap of skin on his rear end there, doesn't it? That doesn't look like a, a tail like a cedar. Does this look like a tail like a cedar? Yeah, it's a big tail. Do you think it fits an elephant? Do you think it fits a hippo? Do you think it fits this animal? What's that animal? A dinosaur. Yeah, I certainly don't think it was a hippo or an elephant. That doesn't make sense. I think behemoth is a dinosaur. I think God was describing to Job a big sauropod dinosaur. You know what? Buddy Davis has another song he wants to sing you, and this will help you remember that. Here we go. Take it away, Buddy. Behemoth is a dinosaur, a dinosaur is he. He eateth grass as an ox, his tail's like 
a cedar tree. His bones are strong as bars of iron. He's chief in the ways of God. Could the behemoth be a dinosaur, a mighty sore of heart? Let's look at the Bible. Let's look in the book of Job. Turn to chapter 40. In verse 15 we're told of a mighty creature that Job must have known. In the jungle of the reeds and ferns, Behemoth made his home. Behemoth is a dinosaur, a dinosaur is he. He eateth grass as an ox, his tail's like a cedar tree. His bones are strong as bars of iron, he's cheap in the way. Of God, could behemoth be a dinosaur, a mighty sore of heart? Some say behemoth is nothing more than this an elephant or a hippo, but I don't think it fits because they don't have a tail. Like a cedar tree Behemoth seems much more like a dinosaur to me Behemoth is a dinosaur, a dinosaur is he He eateth grass as an ox, his tail's like a cedar tree His bones are strong as bars of iron, he's cheap in the ways of God Could behemoth be a dinosaur, a mighty sword Cedar trees. His bones are strong as bars of iron. He's chief in the ways of God. Could behemoth be a dinosaur, a mighty soar of power? I think that's what it is. Cause he gave me a heart and he gave me a smile He gave me Jesus and he made me his child And I just thank you, Father, for making me me I've just been reading about God's creation and all the things he made And I'm feeling so special because I am made in God's image And so are you Today we have a craft to remind us about all the things that God created and it's the creation ball. Days of creation. So we'll start with day one. Where is day one? Yes. On day one, God created day and night. On day two, God created the sky. On day three, God created the land and the plants. On day four, God created the lights, the sun, the moon, and the stars. On day five, God created the sea creatures and the flying creatures. And on the last day of creation, God created the land animals and me. So those are the days of creation. Now for this craft, for a creation ball, you will need paper or you can use card if you have some card at home. You'll need a pair of scissors, you'll need glue and some coloring tools. You can use crayons, coloring pencils, felt pens, any of them will do. Now we have the link to these images in the description for this video. But if you cannot print, you can just cut out these circles and draw and color them. You can use any object. You can make it bigger than mine. You can make it smaller. So just find the top of a container which is round and just trace it. You will need seven circles. So I printed mine out and I've cut them. 
So I have all the days of creation here. Now I'm going to color them. I'm going to color the mountains brown. I want to make it look just like creation. You can choose whatever colors you have and color them beautifully. So color all of them just like I did for this one. When you're done coloring them, you need to fold each one into two. forgot to mention that you need ribbon or yarn as well. So we'll cut a piece of ribbon so that we can hang our creation ball. So we'll start with the first one, Days of Creation. We'll put glue on just half of it. And we'll pick the first day, day and night, and we'll stick it. So this is what it looks like. Then we'll take the second D and put glue on, on half of it. Oops. Sorry, I put the glue on the wrong side. got our second day. Now on the third day, we have the land and the plants. And we're going to stick that. And then on the fourth day, we have the lights. We can put our ribbon in between and put a bit of glue on top. And we'll go to day five. 
we have our flying creatures and the sea creatures. And then finally, we have the land animals and we have man. So you fold the second part of the ribbon or the yarn inside. And then we're going to complete our creation ball. So now we have our creation ball. And for each day, we have what God created. And you can remind yourself of it just looking at it. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, you are a wonderful God. You spoke creation into being. Lord, we are grateful that you made us in your image, that you love us and we are special to you. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So we'll see you next week. Bye.